Hi, and welcome to the translator navigation and custom interface video. We're going to look at some ways you can make navigation using translator a little bit easier for you and some things that translator brings to the table uh, to make that a little bit easier for you. Um, as you as you know, there's a lot of places you can have files. Uh, in the interface you see here, there's the usual desktop, what you've got on your desktop. Um, also, your documents folder, um, all the drives that you have. And with this particular setup, we have our Yosemite drive, a uh, internal large drive in our laptop, and a network drive. And then you've got our favorites thing, which is explained in another video, creating favorites. That's very helpful if for navigation. Um, you have proprietary devices like the Akai CD we've got in our drive, and we've got all the virtual drives that we have. Also, there's lookups, which is not implemented yet. That will be in Translator 6.1, which is a search feature. But let's go on and let's talk about uh, customizing the, uh, first of all, let's talk about navigating, rather, uh, of the interface of uh, how you can see things. So obviously selecting the local external drives, you can see that. You see your Yos my Yosemite drive and you can see everything that's listed on there. Uh, with navigation, you have our favorites thing, which basically you can select some favorite folders that you're used to using. And we've got ours, which are equal to some bug numbers that we have. And you can see selecting these folders shows everything on the right. Now that's an important thing to consider. This is the container pane on the left which is all the containers, which are folders, drives, etc. All the objects that are in that folder are on the right in the object list. So the folder called 5709 here contains these folders and a contact file and an AIFF file. And you can see it come up in the wave player there. Uh, an Akai file, an EXS file, an Apple loop, and some wave files. So anything, again, that's the thing. Anything that you want to see, uh, uh, any container you want to select, you select on the left and you see the objects on the right. Another thing you can see is that there's, uh, if I, if I do, let's say I want to convert, uh, convert this folder called DD Subbase. I double click on it and you get the bulk export dialog because that's what you want to do when you double click. But let's say you want to expand this, you can, click the expand checkbox and then when you double click on it instead what it does is it shows it on the left and shows the contents on the right. I don't usually do this as a matter of practice because there's a shortcut. I'm going to take the shift key and press it down and then double click and that'll automatically expand stuff even though this is unchecked. So that's an easy way to expand things. It's the kind of the same way here. If I want to look at the contents of this 24 string base, I can double click on it with the shift button pressed. Well, no, that's not right. But I can check it here and you can see all the elements of this file there. So that makes it easy to navigate. Um, as you can see, we've got a, a Kai CD in here, so you simply select the Akai CD, it will read it, show you all the partitions, and there's the volumes, and then there's some programs, and then you've got samples and stuff. So that's how you navigate a proprietary CD. And it's the same way with Emu. We've got Emu, we've got the folders, there's the banks. And again, you can see clicking on the triangle allows you to expand the lower level and then that's the bank and there's the samples. And this goes for everything. Uh, let's look at Insonic. So we've got, uh, what if this is a good example? Yeah, this is a virtual drive. As you can see, there's folders and there's yet another nested folder and there's the instrument in there. Kurzweil is the same way. We've got folders, folders, there's your Kurzweil file, and there it is. And you can see Synclaver even works the same way. Okay, now let's, uh, that's basically how you navigate in Translator. You uh, use the container pane on the left and the object list on the right. 
Now, let's talk about customizing the dialogue. You don't have to see everything here. If you click the Show button here, you can see you can choose what you see. So you can not look at the desktop, you can not look at the documents, you don't have to look you don't have to look at the external drives, you don't have to look at lookups, you don't have to look at proprietary drives. So you can kind of cut things down, which is can be kind of important if you're drilling quite far and you want some room. Or maybe you just want to do that via preference. So I'm going to show everything again. Now, there are ways of you're not looking at everything in a global sense, but selecting things specifically. So select root folder, you select that and you say, okay, where do I want to start? And let's say we want to kind of get in here a little bit. Okay, then you can see the container pane just starts from a specific location. That's the root folder is K3065 and then we can see all these folders and stuff like that and all the recycles files and the apple loops and the acid files and to get out of that you just go show full and it'll come back again by the way it's taking a little bit of time because of that Akai CD it has to make sure it's reading uh, another thing you can do is this is similar to what we did before but Let's go, let's go to that location again. Let's even go further. And let's say, you know, I had to do all that work and drilling in to that location. But another way of doing it is simply doing this. Go to, and you can say, okay, I'm gonna go to what folder? All of a sudden, it drilled down immediately right for me. So you can do that. Also remember, these things are available in the show thing, but they're also available here. Select root folder, go to, show full, and everything like that. The refresh button, uh, this on a different subject, uh, the refresh button is also important because if I take this proprietary CD, select it, let's say I want to eject it. So I right click and I say eject. So it's going to eject the CD and then Translator nicely removes that node from the interface. However, I'm going to put the CD back in again and let's wait for a second while it spins up. The Mac is going to complain in a second about the CD because Putting in the CD, it tries to read the file system, doesn't recognize the file system, and it's going to complain. And it's going to ask me what I want to do about it. So let's wait. Some computers take a little bit more time figuring it out. There it is. The disk you inserted was not readable by this computer, which is true. So I can either eject it or I can ignore it. When you ignore it, you have basically an orphaned peripheral in there. The, the Mac doesn't, quote, mount, mount it. And you see, neither does Translator because we're not looking all the time for new things like that. So you have to refresh the interface and boom, there it is. Anytime you can do this with Translator. Um, something else also that's important is that if you make changes, again, Translator isn't looking for events. So you right click and not only can you refresh, but you can refresh uh, actual folder and that's just what it did I didn't make any changes but you can see how that works okay well that's pretty much it for navigation and customizing the interface I hope you enjoyed it and got some ideas in which to work translator a little bit faster thank you very much and have a happy day mm -hmm.